Hello, um, my name is Angela Soddard. I am an ESC volunteer on the Resolve Network. And today I'm speaking with Sam Hardman, who has walked the famous Camino de Santiago, which we're going to hear a lot more about. Um, hello, Sam. How are you? Hello, I'm good. Thank you. Cool. Can you introduce yourself a little bit where you are living right now, what you're doing? Um, about are you in the world? Yeah, I'm in Aberdeen in Scotland. Um, I've been here for two years. Um, before then, I lived in Germany. Uh, at the moment, I'm working for the Scottish government. So, yeah, that's what I do. Awesome. And uh, tell me about the Camino de Santiago, for those who don't know what it is. The Camino de Santiago is a pilgrimage route that's been walked like almost continuously since about 800 AD, so 1,200 years. Um, it starts in a variety of locations, but usually starts from the border between Spain and France. But actually, it could start from anywhere in Europe. Um, there's lots of different routes. And what it is, is in a, around 800 AD, the kind of legend has it that the bones of St. James, who was martyred for preaching Christianity, washed up on the shore in Spain in a boat covered in scallop shells. And the people there built a, uh, a shrine to him containing his bones in what is now Santiago de Compostela in Spain. And this, uh, this shrine was gradually built up and up and it became Santiago de Cathedral. And pilgrims from across Europe would walk to visit the relics of St. James, pray to St. James in the cathedral. And that's been going on so, as I said, over over a thousand years, and yeah, so in kind of recent history, the pilgrimage almost completely died out. So, if you look at the kind of numbers of people arriving in Santiago in maybe the 1970s, 1980s, it's down into like less than 100 people a year or so. But then in the 80s, it kind of it underwent some kind of revival, and the numbers have been increasing almost continuously since then. And so, I think I think last year, 300,000 people arrived in Santiago from across Europe and also across the world. So it's Americans there, Koreans, Japanese people from everywhere. So people walk this for a variety of reasons. Some people still walk it for the original religious reasons. So people also walk it because they like hiking or they want to meet people or just for more uh, ambiguous spiritual reasons. So really there's a lot of reasons to do it. But yeah, that's what it is. Got an amazing amount of and so what was your reason for wanting to walk the Camino? My reason, I had been uh, working in Germany for three years and my uh, contract ended because I had a short term contract that finished so I had no job and lots of time. I didn't really know what to do <laughs> with myself, I didn't know what my next job would be or where I was going so I decided to take a break and go walking in Spain. And the main reason I did it then, apart from needing a break from everything to think about things, was that I also had unlimited time because I had no job, which was quite convenient because it takes quite a while. So the, the first time I walked, I, went, I walked from France and it was 800 kilometers. So this takes a, around a month, so you need a good amount of time to do it. That's quite a walk indeed. Um, and did you walk with anyone or was your plan to start solo and see if you'd meet people on the way i started on my own but you which i which is how i like to do it i've done it i've done it again since then i prefer to do it this way because it's really easy to meet people so the, the first time i did it i ended up walking with a group of german students quite a lot of the way and you often kind of meet people on, on the walk and then separate and then meet them again later in different hostels because people are staying so because everyone's walking at roughly the same pace keep on running into the same people over and over again for a month so it's very easy to get to know people and i did it again in 2019 and that time i was walking with some hungarians um so i met them right near the beginning and we walked almost the entire way together so this is it's very common that happens a lot of people start alone but you very quickly find uh, groups of people from different countries or whatever and as long as someone is kind of walking at the same pace as you you tend to form into groups that's normal that's really fantastic to make friends on the way. Are you still in touch with them? Yeah, yeah, yeah. I talk to them proudly. 
really cool. And tell me about like experiences with different people. Were there different languages? Did you have any issues communicating? Did you find different cultures and different interesting cultural things on the way between people? Yeah, so communicating can be challenging. <laughs> so my Spanish is basically non-existent, which makes things interesting. But I, I do speak some German, so I was able to speak to Germans in German, which was nice, good for me to practice, and also meant I could talk to people who couldn't speak English. But there are so many different cultures and languages there, it's impossible to, to know all of them. And so a lot of the time you're kind of relying on pointing at things and sign language and finding interpreters and this kind of thing. So I was speaking to like people in Japan and people from Korea. Now I do not, do not speak Korean or Japanese, but you still you still find a way. Um, yeah. But, but really, if you speak if you speak English or Spanish, you'll be fine. There's normally enough people that speak one of those two languages around, and also speak some other languages that you can get by just fine. I think. So I'm quite lucky in that way that I speak English. Definitely helps to find a common way to communicate. And it's really great you find that solidarity together, especially if other people can support. Um, so what do you think was like the main things that you learned on your journey, or even on all the different bits that you're going? Did you take any life lessons, any unexpected things you learned on the way? Life lesson. The big life lesson really is how little, like how little you actually need like to be happy or just generally in life so if you what you on the Camino you're walking for a month with just a backpack with really very little stuff in it and actually because you have to carry everything the less you bring the better because it's everything you bring is weight on your back for like eight nine hours a day and so I had hardly anything with me just like one change of clothes and some wash stuff and a guidebook and that's about it so you're walking for for a month with just those very few things and then you realize it's fine, like you don't need loads of stuff, which I think is a good lesson generally for life. Like you don't need to buy loads of things to be happy or have loads of stuff or be rich or any of these things. Like you can get by just fine with the very minimal things. As long as you have good people and places to see and things you're interested in, it's good. That's definitely really fantastic to see like what you need and what you don't need. But if there was something else you needed or did anything break on the way, like how did you find that support if it was something you needed help with? Yeah, I mean, the main issue I have is getting uh, blisters. So you kind of, you're walking for ages and you can injure yourself re relatively easily. So a lot of people will end up needing to go to the pharmacy or get supplies. And I had to do this. I had to buy new shoes and get medical supplies from a pharmacy. It's not too hard to do. Like a, lot, a lot of the time you're walking in through quite remote places, with just tiny villages. There are a few cities on the way. Um, because there's so many people walking, and generally what people need, like what pilgrims need is basically the same. So there is quite a good supply chain of stuff along the route. And there are also people who can help you. So you, every evening you will stay in these hostels which are set up just for pilgrims and the people that run them are normally volunteers and they know what people need and what help they need and where people can go to get supplies and that kind of thing so really you're never too far away from help if you need anything or if something breaks or anything like this that's really fantastic to hear that there's a support there and did you find there was like a sense of community on the whole route particularly if you're all staying together did you share meals together did you find that sense of community Oh yeah, definitely. Like sharing meals together is pretty common. I did this a lot of times. So it, and he, people often go out to restaurants because they, they're very cheap on the community. They have these pilgrim menus where it's like three courses for 12 euros or something, which is, is very good. And so people do this a lot, but even then people still cook for themselves. And so I can remember one time I was staying in a, in a, a church, which let people sleep on the floor in the evening and they provided food. But you had to kind of cook it yourself so everyone who was staying for the night would meet together in the evening decide what they wanted to cook go out and get the ingredients and then they would put big big tables out in the village square and you would all have a big kind of communal meal there and that happens every night in that particular place which is a small village in the middle of spain and so yeah i mean it's common very common especially in the more remote locations 
That's amazing and really nice that you can like come together at the end of a long day and you've all got those same experiences. So apart from the blisters, what else was the hardest part of your journey? What was your biggest struggles? Uh, so in the walk, it's kind of, it can, it can be relentless at times. And so that there's one section in the, in the middle of the Camino Frances, which is the most popular route, so, which is the French way. There's a section in the middle called the Meseta, which is 200 kilometers, a very flat, very open, like basically wheat fields the whole way. There's no hills, there's no woodland or anything. It's just fields for miles and miles and miles. I was walking through there in August, in, so it's incredibly hot. It's like boiling heat, it's really dry. There's no water anywhere and there's no shade. So that was probably the hardest day. I think I walked 45 kilometers in a day in the like boiling heat. So that would probably, that would be my most challenging day, I think. But generally challenge is really just keep keeping going day after day after day, because hopefully you can get tired. People normally start walking at about six or seven in the morning every day. There are no days off really. So it's challenging, but also I love it. So I don't really have too much of a problem with it. So loving it was also your motivation as well. Like, is that how you keep yourself going? Is it more pep talks? Is it more meeting people on the way? Like what keeps you going when it got really, really hard? Yeah, I mean, I don't really have too much problem keeping going because I like it so much. But it's, I mean, you do have to kind of change your routine. Normally, normally I'm not a morning person or anything like this. So I have to kind of adapt pretty quickly to a new, new way of doing things. But I guess it's hard. I mean, you pretty quickly get used to the new new way that just that's what you do in the morning. You get up early, you put your backpack on and you start walking and that's it. But because you don't have anything else to do, you're not working, you're not doing anything else. The only goal you have for that day is to like walk to the next location. There's nothing else to worry about, which makes it a lot easier, I think. That gets you through it, which is absolutely fantastic. So we've done your hardest day. What about your favorite day? What's the day that you remember most and really enjoyed? My favorite day? Uh, probably there's a, uh, a village in Galicia or just on the edge of Galicia called Osobrero and it's in a, at the top of a mountain and uh, all the bit, all the, the houses there are really old, like hundreds of years old, thatched, thatched round houses. And so you climb up a mountain, like it's pretty like steep, long mountain. It's a very hard climb. But when you get to the top, you arrive in this really nice village with kind of amazing views or right across Galicia, you can see for miles. And the day I walked there, it was perfect weather, like sunshine, not too hot, just everything was good and so this was probably my favorite day I think. That sounds absolutely beautiful and in the whole journey like how long did the whole journey that you did take all together? Uh, so I walked from uh, the edge of France to Santiago in 26 days and then after I arrived in Santiago I decided to keep going so there's an optional extra stage where you can walk from Santiago to the very very end of Spain like on the coast and that's an extra 90 kilometers so I did this and that took an extra three days and so I would have been 20, 29 in total to the very end and then I had no more land left to walk so I had to stop. Really. Amazing 29 days of walking and how was that feeling when you finally got to the coast when you finally got to the end and this has been your routine for almost a whole month? kind of sad really because then it stops and it's over and so people will tell you like it's not the destination it's the walk that counts and when people do it for the first time there's a lot it's kind of a strong drive to get to the end because that's your main goal and now I've done it several times I realize it's better to go slowly and enjoy the walk because when you arrive that's it it's all over and so it's much better to pace yourself and see the sights and enjoy it a bit a bit more and really enjoy the journey but also in the sense of achievement so it's not yeah. it's not that stuff, but i mean arriving in santiago was amazing because that was my main my main goal and the first first time i did that yeah it's amazing you you arrive on a 
you arrive on a kind of a hill overlooking the city and you see the cathedral towers and after you've been aiming for that for a month it's yeah emotional i would say i can imagine and how was it coming home after doing all of that and then re-entering i suppose not society civilization big cities uh, yeah it's quite hard you get you change your whole way of life for a month and you get used to it and then you come back and there's nothing like there's no interesting people to meet or like places to walk to in the same way i mean they're interesting people but it's not it's not the same like you lose the rhythm that you had in the community this is why i go back essentially because i haven't had enough yet that is really great that you want to keep going are you planning another trip in the future yeah i well as i said there's lots of different routes and so i I originally did the most popular route, which is from France to Spain to Santiago. And then in 2019, I did another route called the Camino Primitivo, which starts in Oviedo, which is a city in northern Spain. And I was planning last year to walk the Portuguese route from Lisbon, which is another option. So you walk north into Santiago. Luckily, with COVID, that didn't happen. And so now I'm planning to go back as soon as it's reasonably feasible again, which is probably going to be 2022 i think but we'll see i'm just kind of keeping an eye on the situation but yeah as soon as it's possible i have the books all ready to go and my bag is like waiting so yeah that's so exciting i hope you can go as soon as possible and just a final question uh, if there is any other people that are really inspired and they want to do the same thing and they want to know everything you know about the route and what to do like what would you say is your top advice for anyone wanting to do a similar long journey like the Camino like you did? Uh, best place to get advice is there's a, a website called Camino Forums I forget the exact web address but if you just google Camino Forums you'll find it and it's a, a very active and full of very experienced people and you can ask like any question you want from there and you'll get an answer very quickly Apart from this, there's not too much really. You need to be in like you need to be in reasonable shape, but you don't have to be super fit. You don't have to be an athlete or anything. And the main advice I would give would be to make sure you have good equipment. That's that's really important, especially really good shoes and a really good backpack because you're you're wearing these things like eight to nine hours every day. And if you have cheap equipment, you'll get injuries. You'll be really uncomfortable it's just not it's not worth it so i would say invest in those things but other things like it's a very especially if you go on the most popular route the route is very well equipped to cater for people and uh, there's a lot of first time walkers like, everything you need is there if you forget to bring something you can easily get it in spain so i wouldn't worry too much yeah and then there's kind of the only other the only other thing is being mentally prepared to walk long distances every day like it's not a conventional holiday where you're relaxing so much it is hard work sometimes it's exhausting and painful so if you don't like that kind of thing you probably hate it but if you want a, if you want a challenge then it's good and if you want to meet interesting people from all over the world it's good for that too that's absolutely amazing and well done for overcoming such challenges and doing it again and i really hope you can get on your next adventure soon so i'll say thank you very much sam thank you for speaking with us and i look forward to hearing about your next adventure soon Thanks.